Hi, my name is Mark. And I'm not sure when you're watching this, but at the time I'm recording this, it's Monday, uh, March 16th. This video will probably only come out in a couple of weeks, so maybe then this pandemic situation is a little bit less out of control. But right now I'm staying at home, practicing the guitar, trying to record some songs I actually forgot about. Um, and one would assume that by me being at home, I would have the time to properly dress up for a video and do a proper video this week. But as you can probably see, one doesn't really care. So, basically, what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about the solo that I think is super underrated, especially for the time when it was originally played, which is a solo of Just What I Needed by The Cars. If you don't know that song, I highly suggest you go check it out. I'd play it for you now, but there's a high chance of this video getting blocked, so I'll just play it to you eventually. And even though I'm not really going to teach you the solo note for note and exactly lick for lick, I'm going to show you why I think it's super underrated and why I think you should try to learn it. So I'll just play it for you by myself. I'll try to add the chords in the background so that you get a little bit more context of what we're playing over. So let me just play you the solo and we'll go from there. And that's the solo. And even if you think, well, that's a cool solo, but how can it be like the most underrated solo or the solo that I didn't know about but I should? I'll explain that right now. But before I do, I just want to ask if you can, please subscribe to the channel and turn on all the notifications. As you're probably aware, YouTube acts a little bit weird, like even if you subscribe to the channel, those channel's videos may really not show up in your subscription box, and even if you ring the little notification bell thingy below, you still really will not be notified of that channel's content, so if you want to see tons of my videos, not only will I suggest subscribing and turning on all the notifications, but also follow me on social media. And not only will I post some exclusive stuff there, like improvised souls and jamming over backing tracks, but I also post there about my videos, so like, if you follow me there, you'll also get notified through there. So yeah, links for usual suspects will be below, but in general, at Martin English Guitar. And since you're down there, please consider leaving a like and share this video on social media, I'd highly appreciate it. But yeah, getting back to the video itself. Before you start coming at me like, oh, that's just a, your regular rock solo. It's not something fancy, it's not something shreddy. It's not really something that makes me go like, yes, that's the thing I was looking for. Well, let me just remind you that this is a solo from the late 70s. This is not like an 80s, 90s, or even a modern solo that somebody did in a more rock context. This is a solo from 79, no, 78, I think. And you're right, we're in the sort of E major, C sharp minor sort of a thing. <laughs> and this solo definitely applies some of those more pentatonic style licks. But that doesn't make it a bad solo. For all of you guys who say, oh, I need a fancy scale to do a proper solo, I need to find some outside sounds or something like Dorian's fancy sounds. Again, I agree, sometimes it's cool to add those sort of sounds, I've done videos about that before, but if you look at this solo, every single note matters, every single lick matters. I'm not really sure how much of this solo is improvised and how much of this solo was composed and thought out, but I'm going to say that at least a good part of it was thought out. And here's why. If we go from the beginning of the solo, uh, we start out with something like... And again, we're in this sort of C-sharp minor pentatonic sort of a thing. So when we do... This is just our regular pentatonic stuff, right? It works. But then we do... We bend not to an E, which would be the correct note in our scale, but we bend to a D-sharp. And in the context of C-sharp minor, that's a ninth. And if we think about it in the context of E major, that's a major 7. So if we're just thinking about regular soloing, like, oh, I'm in C sharp minor, uh, E major, I'm going to do those sort of pentatonic things, why would we bend to that D sharp? Well, we're bending to that D sharp because at the time we do that bend, we're playing over a B chord. I'm not sure if they actually play a B chord on the rhythm section or they just play like a B power chord, but either way, if we have a B power chord sort of a thing and we target that D sharp, we get that B major sound, which follows in with the rules of our C sharp minor E major sort of tonality. So it's as if we were doing something like... We're landing right on that B. We could have probably just played something like... You know, just like your random pentatonic stuff, and it would probably work, but in this case, it actually shows that you're focusing on what chords you're playing over. But it also shows that you're not just going basic bitch on this and going, okay, we're going to play over a B, so here we go, B major arpeggio. 
not like there's anything wrong with that. In this case, it's almost like you're mixing both worlds. You're mixing like the solely feely pentatonic stuff so, style of soloing, and you're mixing it with hitting those core tones, targeting those core tones. And again, I think that makes this solo really cool. And not just that, but if we get to the next part, again, we started out with. So we bend again to that D sharp. And if you think about it, now that D sharp is actually being played over that C sharp. And the D sharp is the ninth of C sharp. And again, I'm not really sure if in the uh, rhythm section, the rhythm guitar part, if they're playing like full chords like E major, B major, C sharp minor, but whichever way, I don't think it really matters actually. Uh, so we're playing over a C sharp power chord or even maybe a C sharp minor, but we're not hitting that third, we're hitting a ninth. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we have a sus2 chord. In this case, a C sharp sus2. But you know what the cool thing is about that C sharp sus2? Is that it's not necessarily a C sharp sus2 can be a G-sharp sus4. And again, that may sound like fancy gibberish, but if it's a C-sharp sus2, it means that you would want that 2, that suspended second, to either result to a minor third or to a major third. But because it can also be seen as a G-sharp sus4, well, it's basically the same sort of premise. That G-sharp sus4 wants to resolve, that suspended fourth wants to result to a third, either a major third or a minor third. So we basically have this like sus chord that can be either a C sharp or a G sharp, but it doesn't really matter anyways, because both G sharp and C sharp are chord tones of the C sharp power chord we're playing over. What is the next chord we're going to play over? Well, it's a G sharp. And what happens next? And then we do this little enclosure thing, this little hammer on. And again, if you think about your pentatonic scale, this note is not in your pentatonic scale, but it is the third of your G-sharp major chord, which, again, we're playing now over a G-sharp chord. And if you think about our previous analysis, we're doing that resolution we talked about before, resolving that suspended fourth, in this case, into a major chord, a G-sharp major chord. And again, maybe I'm wrong about this, I didn't really pay close attention to the rhythm section of it. Maybe they are playing full chords, maybe they're not just power chords. And maybe the guitar player who played on this didn't really thought much about it, he was just using his ear, and he was like, okay, this sounds cool. But even if it did, it doesn't really change the fact that even though we're playing over basic pitch chords, this solo we're playing is the farthest thing away from it. We've only looked at the first couple of bars of this solo, but we already have something like... And I can tell you right now, if I was playing that with tons of reverb on an acoustic guitar on this dark parking lot for a YouTube video, it would get a bunch of views. Well, I should probably play it a little bit better for that sort of a thing. And again, I highly suggest you figure out this solo by yourself, not only because, like, I don't really do this whole sort of exact lick for lick sort of a thing, even when I do like interesting licks, I only usually do small chunks of it, and because some of the licks are actually pretty interesting, like the next lick after this part is this. And back in the day, like, I don't know, maybe four years ago or something? Five years ago, maybe? It was really hard to figure that lake out. It really confused me. It's not like it's a super hard lake, but it's got some interesting fingerings and stuff like that that was like, wait, what? Again, not like there's anything wrong with shreddy solos and stuff like that, but it's not in every solo that you have something like... Even that part right there, that's a little... Even though, like, yes, it's a standard pentatonic position thing. When you usually do a bend on this uh, uh, 12th fret of the second string, that B, you usually bend it to a C sharp. But it doesn't bend it to a C sharp. He bends it, well, in this case it would be stupid to call it, but a B sharp. Uh, he bends it to that C, which is not on your pentatonic scale. But you know where that C is, well, it's on the third of G-sharp, which is the chord we're playing at that time. Even if you say, well, I think there are more underrated solos, I actually knew that solo already, I actually think there are solos that deserve more recognition than this one, maybe there are, but 
this solo is pretty bitchin, so I think you should try to learn this solo by yourself and even fail miserably at it, because, like, even though it's not a completely hard solo to figure out, because some of these licks are a little bit weird, when you try to figure them out and you don't really figure them out completely correctly, you'll probably end up with some cool licks under your belt that you probably didn't think about before. And, again, it's not like I don't like the shreddy solos, I grew up with that sort of a thing. There's, of course, merit in being able to do all those crazy arpeggios. But even though they sound cool and they're fancy to look at, they're not really your uh, soulful, bendy sort of a thing, sort of pentatonic uh, soul that many times we grow out of it thinking, oh, it's not fancy enough, it's not shreddy enough, it's not scaly arpeggio enough. Again, I can completely understand that train of thought. But this soul is the most beautiful example of like, you can still be fancy, hit those quarter tones, and you can still do all of your regular pentatonic stuff, and even if you want to be shreddy on it, you can. Like, uh, right at the end of the solo, he does this little run-up of like... It's not super shreddy, of course, it's just that double stop, sixth interval sort of a thing. But maybe when you're doing your solo, and you try to use some of these concepts, if you'd like to, in the end, maybe you can end up with some crazy skill run. A little bit probably played, but you get what I mean. When it's your solo, you can do whatever you want, but you can take this sort of a thing in consideration. Again, probably some of you already knew about this solo, it's not like the cars are an unknown band or something like it, um, but it's definitely a solo that I think not everybody knows about, and it's definitely underrated because of that. In my humble opinion, I think that maybe this solo should be up there with solos like, I don't know, maybe the Smoke on the Water solo or the Freebird solo. But again, these are just my thoughts, and I can accept that you don't really think about it the same way. But, anyways, what I want to get at is, if you don't know about the cars, you should definitely check them out. They have some really cool songs, this one being an example, again, it's not just the solo that's cool, the whole song is pretty cool. Um, and if you don't know about the solo, maybe try to figure it out on your own, I think you'll only gain from that, and I think that if you want to, and are able to apply some of the concepts that are applied on this solo, you may become a better guitar player because of it. But again, these are just my thoughts. Leave yours in the comment section below. If you have anything to add to this discussion, please do. If there was something you think I missed, something I should have said, uh, please leave it in the comment section below as well. And yeah, again, I think that's pretty much it. If you can, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, follow me on social media, uh, turn on all the notifications, all that sort of a thing. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll just end it here because I don't want to bore that the ones of you who stayed this far. I'll just end it with this. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs>